All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Bert's Bike. Today, we are test driving the Tenere 700. And man, it is a handsome bike in person. Looks super good. It's really holding out for the white one, but this, uh, this green looks amazing. All right, so walking up to the bike, it is pretty tall. And it kind of reminds me, just a burlier version of my CRF 300L. All right. And I am on my tiptoes. Bars feel nice. I think feels like it's supposed to. Interesting, I was really kind of liking the old Game Boy screen and how simple it is, but this is cool. Controls, everything feels like it's set up just the way it's supposed to be. All right. Really responsive throttle. First gear clunks into place really good. Friction zone is pretty far out actually. And there's the bite point. So about an inch off the bars. Okay. All right, let's just do some slow stuff here to get used to the bike. Ooh. Yep. It's pretty nice. Suspension is pretty plush actually. It's a pretty rough road and it is just kind of soaking it in on all in. It's pretty soft suspension, but also the seat is really soft as well. There's some pep on there. Uh, sorry, Tenere. Gonna have to uh, take you through some water here. Alright, so right away on that stop, the brakes aren't that bitey, but then again, this is a new brake pads on the bike, so. But riding it around is easy. Yeah, I am stood straight up on this, single footing it. So on a flat parking lot, I keep two feet down, but really you're gonna be, be one footing it. And just for reference, I am 6'1", and I have a 32 inch inseam. It's definitely on the taller side, but I like it. All right, let's see what's going on with this thing. Wow, it's a pretty cool little riding experience. All right, so already I can hear some wind noise, but I can't really... I can hear some wind noise, but I can't really um, feel any buffeting yet, but I've only gone like 35 miles an hour, so we'll see. And if you've been following the channel for some time, you'll know that I owned pretty briefly a CRF 300L and I ended up selling that because um, I had a coolant leak issue which was really kind of unusual. It just kept going back to the dealer for the same repair and although the last time they did it I think it was fixed correctly I just kind of came to the conclusion that I just wanted a little bit more power for the street because I want to be able to tour with the bike confidently. Let's see where we're at. Alright, so I'm at 40 miles an hour, and there is some buffeting now, alright. So it, you can tell though it's kind of hitting my visor, but it's clean air right here, which is really good. I guess that's what I really want, it's like I want something that I can strap a bunch of luggage to, and it'll be just fine, not have to worry about not having enough power on the interstate, and 
and uh, just also be able to take it off road with confidence and not sort of like tear up a street bike so and the other thing about this Tenere too is I really like the way it looks and I don't really like the look of a bunch of adventure bikes I really just like classically styled motorcycles and here's kind of my dilemma at the moment is that I have two bikes and if I get another bike I may have to get rid of one of my other two bikes and I love them both so that would be a hard decision which one to get rid of but I really want to get a bike ready for just motorcycle camping and some light adventuring and this seems to fit the bill and it also feels just like a, a bigger dirt bike or a bigger dual sport I should say not a dirt bike but it's kind of like my CRF but just a lot more of it and I really like that so before we can get out here and open it up a little bit one other thing why I'm looking at this bike compared to something maybe cheaper so I've been upgrading my Bonneville and one of the valuable lessons I learned is if you can get your suspension working for you and from what I can tell right now just a lot of travel on this and there's a lot of adjustability for a stock for stock shocks and I think this might fit the bill for what I'm looking for short first gear Now, my expectations for this bike, was it something that I think was going to blow me away as far as like performance and torque and all that kind of stuff? And it really depends on how you look at it, but I think it's going to fit the bill pretty well for what I want to do. I actually love how tall it is. You know what though, it's really just compliant around town. Here we go. five six miles an hour easy to control riding that back brake slow speed control hey let's see <laughs> I do like this engine yeah I just went over a huge bump and the suspension just soaked it up that was awesome. Now, this is what I really wanted to try on this bike. Okay. So this windshield actually has a dead zone right here. So if I lean in, it's kind of throwing the wind over my head. But if I'm at a regular position, it's shooting it at my visor. But there isn't a whole lot of turbulence down here. It is windy though. It's not uh, uncontrollably so. Oh, there's some railroads coming up. Let's see how good this bike handles that. There we go. Yeah, just soaking it up. It isn't like riding on a cloud, though. Oh, there we go. Get some power in there now. It's fourth gear. Yeah, there's a little bit more on that fourth gear. You know, one thing I really like about this bike for uh, city commuting, which is kind of what I'm doing. Ooh, big bump there. Pretty nice. Yeah. See, my Triumph with my stocks, with the stock suspension, would have just, would have just been rattling all around if I hit that bump. This is just kind of soaking it up. You still feel it though. It's not like a, it's not like you're just cruising on a cloud. But I guess for off-roading, you still want to feel the road below you. And I think if you, actually for a city commuter, like if you are riding in the city, especially here around Nashville, Tennessee, there's all this kind of junk everywhere on the road and debris all the time from all this construction. I mean, being higher up off the ground, in my opinion, is a little bit more ideal. A little curve here, let's see what happens. Second gear, a little potent. All right, it does like to, turn in, which is great. Yeah, 
that. Yeah, so just a side note, these mirrors are a little too far back for me. I don't know what I would have to do, but um, they're just out of the reach of the view of my helmet, so I kind of have to look down to see. Now let's talk about this. So I said I wanted to, to make this more of like an adventure style bike. Do I think it's going to be crushing the highway? No, but I think it will have ample power to not uh, kind of stress the engine out on the highway on this. All right, let's talk about kind of the cockpit area view here. A very clean setup. The tank, I think, is shaped really nice. Um, from what I understand, this gas cap actually comes off, which I actually don't like. I would rather it open up. Um, if you're having to, you know, um, fill up and stuff, especially if you have to fill up from a gas can off-road, if you drop your gas cap in the dirt, you have to clean it off before you put it back on, so a hinged cap would have been awesome. And then the other thing I want to say, let's talk about this TFT screen. It is a nice looking screen. It looks um, like a really tiny iPad or iPhone, because even though the screen is really big, the uh, bezel around it is humongous. So you're not really gaining a lot of real estate as far as um, what you see on the screen. But it is crisp, but the only thing I don't like about it is that when you shift gears and stuff, and when you're revving the bike, like let's say you rev the bike, there's a noticeable delay lag in the, um, in the RPM, and also the speedometer. I really like things to be crisp. I recently rode the KTM. Uh, 390 Adventure and the LCD on that one is just a lot more crisp and responsive So I like that about it. Is this gonna make or break somebody's decision? No, but um, I really love bikes with low tech on them and This bike when it started out it had this sort of like Game Boy looking screen and I actually really enjoyed that now I never got a chance to ride that version so so I don't know what that looks like. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what that looks like um, in person, you know? But I liked how low tech it was. Now, yeah, so I liked how low tech it was and just to the point I am liking that the ABS button on this bike is right there and that there's a USB outlet stock. That's super nice. Um, yeah, so while I'm at it, let's talk about the ergonomics. Again, 6'1", 32 inch inseam. I think I have pretty long arms, but the riding position is definitely ideal. Very ideal for somebody like me. I feel like my posture's in the right place. I feel like I have just... Here's where we're gonna test these brakes out. Yeah. So the brakes on this aren't the best. They're on this particular one. Uh, you really have to be aware of your braking. Now again, this is coming from... from riding, uh, you know, my Z900 has pretty good brakes on it, but this is noticeably laggy on there. Like, you give it what you think you would need to stop, and then you have to give it a lot more. So let's get back to the ergonomics. Ideal riding position for me, personally. I love it, actually. I feel very in command of the bike. These are standard controls. However, there's a slight bend in my knee, which I think is great. That's the way I like it. So the levers are where they're supposed to be. They feel really good. The handlebars are feel really good to me. They're the right kind of situation for my hands, right kind of width, right kind of bend. I just kind of go to it pretty naturally. Earlier I, I touched on the uh, clutch free play, but um, it's, it's a little further out than I'm used to, but I've gotten used to it pretty quick. So that's a non-issue.
Yeah, what makes this an ideal commuter is uh, you're just really in command and you can see over traffic. I love that. Now another bike I've been wanting recently has been um, the BMW R18 just because and I probably would avoid riding in this city if I was on that bike just for the sheer fact that you are so low to the ground that if a guy, this SUV up here, if he were to, if I were to be behind him he probably wouldn't even see the top of my head. So adventure bikes have really that going for them and I really think that's cool. I'd say this bike is just really intuitive to ride. And it seems like it has just enough power to where you can have a lot of fun revving the bike and riding it around and not uh, sort of like nursing the throttle or being too careful with it. So all bikes nowadays kind of have that on-off throttle thing. And I feel like that's just an EPA thing that most bikes are, are uh, having to deal with nowadays. Just look at these bumps, just soaking them up. This washboard road here, uh, soaking it up. Better give them their bike back here. Alright, just duck walk the bike. Pretty easy to duck walk, actually. And right, while I'm waiting here, flash the pass, high beam, low beam, horn, and hazards. Alright. Look at this menu screen a little later. All right, another cool thing about this bike, it just is easy to flick around. Let's get some brake testing here. Yeah, super sluggish on the brakes. You really gotta try. Really gotta try. And uh, you really gotta pay attention to what you're doing here. All right, let's try this U-turn out. Nobody behind me. All right, Let's see how. All right. Okay, pretty good actually. I don't feel as confident on it, but that's expected because it's a taller bike. Try it again. Kind of load it up a little bit. Yep. All right, a little better. So the thing about having these taller bikes with these, I think it's something like 10, 10 inches of suspension travel, um, it, it's definitely not going to feel as glued to the ground as like a Z900 RS or even a Bonneville or something like that, but it feels plush and it... Uh, and, and you can really feel kind of what the back wheel's doing, and you can really feel that back wheel like digging in. Here, let's park the bike and we can kind of take one more look at it. A little sound check on it. Pretty good sound. All right, let's kind of just talk about it real quick. I love the styling, the paint, everything is what you expect. This headlight looks really good. The tail section looks pretty good too. It's not uh, overly stingery. Interesting little piece there. Oh, okay, interesting. Exhaust, I think, actually looks pretty good for a stock exhaust. Um. <laughs> The welds are kind of crooked, but that's all right. The build quality, quali the build quality looks really good. Comes with a cool little bash plate, and I believe this fender here is actually adjustable. Yeah, you can raise it up a little bit. 
going off-roading a little bit more. But, it, you know, there's some ample clearance there. Super cool. Alright, let's just do a quick start up and walk around. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's look at this headlight. I think those are the high beams. I think I left those high beams on. Low beams. Okay, so low beams are two lights on the bottom turn off. But yeah, I think it looks great. And also I noticed that the turn signals are running lights when they're not in use. Very nice. Not bad for a stock exhaust. What's your first impressions on it? I love it. Yeah. yeah. Sweet, I think it's great, man. Yeah. I love the stance. I love how high up it is. Stand up. Actually, no, I didn't. I, I was like just up about right the whole time, like at a stop. I like kind of stood up a little bit going over some bumps, but I didn't like just stand straight up. But I think it'd be fine. Yeah. You was cool. You looking to get in one yourself? Yeah. yeah. Sort of next one on my list, man. Yeah, it's cool. I'm Rob, by the way. Nice to meet you. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. It's Bird Spike. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. And I'll catch you on the next one.